Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Happy 2023, Delora. We are back. We are back. It's a new year. I'm super excited. We made it. <laughs> we made it by the grace of God. How are your holidays? I haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks. How did things go? Oh, it was lovely. We visited family in Michigan. It so happened to have been during the time where we got all the snow and mm. all the below negative wind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, it hasn't been this cold in a while, in a long while. It was rough, but it was wonderful seeing family. And of course, with baby girl, she loves her family so much. So I love seeing that and being able to create and share those memories. Um, I reached a goal in 2022, a personal one that I I didn't really have starting out the year, but I've been ramming through these books. I reached a hundred books in 2022. Wow. Is that insane? That is insane. (laughs) I have to start listening to audio and take your advice because I've been slacking on my books for sure. What I will say is this. I got a chance to find my love for books again and a good book there's nothing like a good book you know what I mean and very so rich, very rich in story and character yeah how about yours and I say that as a fiction lover obviously there's some yes. great non-fiction out there but fiction has my heart but anyway the holidays were really good because of the winter storm you were talking about wasn't sure if my family was gonna make it to Florida because we kind of always switch off I'm usually with them in Ohio for Thanksgiving, usually here in Florida for Christmas. And so with Winter Storm Elliot, I think is what they dubbed it. Um, it was very touch and go, like literally day of touch and go with travel. So thankfully they made it here and back safely. We had a good time. How was um, your birthday? My birthday was good. Took a little trip to the Disney area, got out. It was crazy jam packed, but had some good was eats. It? Yeah, yeah. Had some good eats. Enjoyed the weather. The weather was uh, still pretty nice here. We got cool here as well, but obviously not freezing, freezing cold. It was cold. It was Florida cold. And yeah, I did took a day trip to Tampa, which was nice. Uh, treated myself to a hot stone massage, which I loved. Like, yes, just you know, did some did some of my favorite things. I had a great brunch, like with friends. Just had some really nice times, and I love the holiday season. So it just gave me all the necessary feels, and I'm very very grateful that I got to spend the time with my loved ones. So. Twas good. Twas good. I was telling you, it feels like, you know, January, we're ramping back up with things. And I think I'm ready. I think I've been seeing a lot of memes I've been relating to about like, oh, that first day really back to work in January (laughs) or like all that shit you put off and said, oh, I'm going to get to that in January is coming due. Yeah, that's where we're at. (laughs) My favorite meme is one of Whoopi Gober's face. Like, I'm off for 18 days and you expect me to just go back to work. (laughs) Exactly. 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 So that's where we're at, but definitely grateful to be seeing another year. There's been some things going on as we know already. So it's time to get into some quick headlines and hot topics because that is what we do on our Thursday episode. So guys, welcome back. We hope you had a great holiday with your families and loved ones and however you chose to spend it. Hopefully some people got some good vacays in there as well. I've seen some 
wonderful vacay photos and videos out on these internets as well. Live y'all best lives. But in quick headlines and hot topics today, we have three quick headlines, two hot topics. So first up, this Chili and Matthew Lawrence romance that I did not see coming whatsoever, did not have this on the January bingo card. Delora, apparently they met in 2022, started off as friends, you know, he, his divorce was finalized from Cheryl Burke, and I guess they took that friendship to the next level over the holidays, spent Thanksgiving together, spent Christmas together in Atlanta, he meeting a family, she out here posting videos of them dancing, and you know, to date Chili, I really do feel like you have to at least be able to do a two-step. You um, absolutely need to be able to do a two-step. So it seems like, you know, these crazy kids are crazy in love. What do you think about this 90s era pairing? I didn't realize how invested I am in this until like this conversation because the idea of (laughs) Matthew Lawrence dating Chili first of all can we talk about the Lawrence brothers let's just take a moment and their chokehold on Disney okay grew up with them Matthew was my favorite Mm, okay okay by far the fact that one of the Lawrence brothers is with a black woman just makes my 10 year old heart very warm (laughs) they all had a shot I could see Joey going this route as well if I'm honest (laughs) (laughs) but I think because we've been on Chili's romance journey for many years she even had the show where she had the matchmaker and yes all of that we were investing in her relationship with Usher back in the day it's just it's just interesting there's almost a 10 year age difference between them but she is living she doesn't have a type apparently (laughs) now that's what's funny is she seems like she always had such an extreme type but maybe she's expanded those boxes a little bit or we just didn't know that it was the swirl that the swirl was a part of those boxes and that's not necessarily saying that's fine but you're, you're talking about a young man. She is 51 years old. Who wouldn't want a shorty? Like, I don't know. <laughs> a young Tenderoni. <laughs> a young Tenderoni. A young 40 something. Because I believe Compared he's 42. Compared to her age. That is all I am 51. <laughs> but no, I think that's what people are thinking that too. Definitely. We've never seen Chili with a white man before either. Let's be honest. So that's, that's yeah, definitely that's a yeah. factor in people's like shock and awe that they are together. But for I the mean, 90s. For the 90s babies, for the people yes. who were growing up in the 90s, yes. we're 80s babies, but we grew up in the 90s. Correct. This is amazing because it's like if they had gotten together when they were younger, it probably would have been a little bit weirder. But now it's like y'all both grown. Y'all didn't both been through some things. So, hey, my only thing with this is I could have sworn that he did Cheryl Burke's possibly dirty, like in terms of infidelity. Uh, so here's the deal. Because she's since posted on her Instagram stories. That was fast. I don't know what went on in their relationship. But what I will say is this about Cheryl. Cheryl kept talking about her divorce. She kept talking about it, like, to the point where he's never said anything about it. I I wonder if Cheryl's messy to some extent. Mm, Never know what truly goes on between two people. That's All I know is protect chili at all costs that part she ain't got time for the little shenanigans so let's not play those games matthew you better have your shit together for this one just be good to chili i guess is the moral of this story moral of the story i hope that she's happy and living her best life because i believe her rep said that she's never seen chili in love like this before and she's been with her since 2005 so yeah, I feel like it's a little young considering he's just been divorced. And I'm like, it, it screams rebound. But yes, I hope everyone's happy. Speak your truth, Delora. Speak your truth. All right. <laughs> Jeremy Renner got injured in a freak incident, freak snowplow incident to be specific. He just posted a photo uh, to his official Instagram with a picture and captioned it. Thank you for all your kind words. I'm too messed up now to type, but I send love to you all. He was injured near his home in Reno, Nevada, and had to be airlifted to a local hospital. It appears he was run over by a snowplow that weighed at least, or at least over, 14,000 pounds. And this was in an effort to help neighbors who were trying to get out. You know, they were stuck apparently because of the weather. 
this was a crazy story and still like sad. I only really heard about the additional details about him kind of getting run over today. What were your thoughts when this story broke, Delora? I was extremely nervous, extremely nervous. I'm actually still nervous. This is a very serious injury. And I think my anxiety couldn't handle it because this was also going on around the time of watching the Bengals game with the Bills and seeing Hamlin incident. Anything blunt force trauma like to the chest and just reeling watching it live on television and then seeing this news on Jeremy Renner, I was like, oh my gosh, I I can't process this. So I've been praying for both of them because this is just it's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm not even related to him. I'm not even his biggest fan. <laughs> like, but as a human being, you don't want anyone to go through, you know, what he's gone through with that freak incident. And I just pray for speedy, speedy recovery. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought up the football incident because obviously that's been all over the headlines. Usually we don't really cover sports, but definitely sending thoughts and prayers to him and his family. So many stories coming out about kind of the game itself and how things went down and the fact that it was more so the players and coach coaches than the NFL themselves and all this stuff that actually canceled the game. So I've been sticking with that story and and trying to, you know, hear more about it, but um, definitely hoping that he's able to make a full recovery. That was scary, scary stuff. Um, but back to Jeremy Renner, this is one of those things that makes me hate like, household accidents because it's something that is so like a fear of mine because it's something that you cannot control you're literally just going about your everyday stuff who knows how many times he's had this snow plow out and is doing his thing and then just this one time one slip one wrong move and somehow you get run over by it like it reminds me because we are a tv and movie pod it reminds me of I believe it's called man in the moon a movie that came out back in the day with Reese Witherspoon and the young man in that got run over by the um lawnmower and and killed and it was so yes. tragic because again this is someone who this is he's done this on such a regular basis and then just that one day it's a freak accident so it just, it, you know, it, it's sad. Jeremy Renner is known for his action roles. He's a member of the Marvel Universe. He's Hawkeye. You know, all these things. It's his career. Is he going to be able to ever physically get back to that place? I don't know. But I was just hoping he was going to survive. Because when, whenever people say that someone's in critical condition, I don't know what that means. Critical condition always sounds like they're on the brink of death. And because he at least posted this picture... I'm hopeful that he's doing better, but yeah. it's all, that's always scary. You just never scary. know when you because hear that. It could be a long road to recovery after something like that too. And so that's where it's I just pray. He's going to be okay. Hoping for the very best. All right, Delora, let's move on to our third quick headline for today. While we were away, we finally got the verdict for Tory Lane's trial. He was found guilty in the 2020 shooting of Megan the Stallion. He was found guilty on all three charges that he was facing, which was assault with a semi-automatic firearm, carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharge of a firearm with gross negligence. He faces a maximum sentence of 22 years in prison and possible deportation back to his native Canada. This trial publicly was a shit show. Girl. It was like a scene from one of the most ratchet series or TV shows I can imagine. And so I had to stop paying attention to it because I was getting frustrated with a lot of the rhetoric and a lot of the armchair lawyer experts and all these people wanting to weigh in and and tell us about everything after the the court day was over and all this it just sounded like a circus very toxic for sure yeah I just wanted to know like is is he going to be found guilty or not so I honestly stopped paying attention and the day the verdict came out I felt like oh thank god like thank god 
this is over, thank God, I feel like justice is going to be served in this case, because in the court of public opinion, it had been wild. It had been wild to me that yes. people had not wanted to believe the bare basics of the facts and the evidence about her being shot and all of that. So give me your thoughts about the case and about the final verdict that we have as of now, because I know they are going to appeal. Yes, it was definitely a circus. The conversation, especially on social media, was so toxic. And it was almost like from Tory Lane's, you know, side of things, they were willing to sway public opinion. Like that was like a priority for them. So the fact that his lawyer or a lawyer, part of his team always had something to say on social media after each day, when this man's behavior, long list of actually recorded bad behavior and assaults, i.e. August Alsina, i.e. like his general reputation was not some type of shiny polished thing that would say oh he would never shoot her and then it's like why not believe meg why not why, why is that so hard for people i don't understand you got young jock talking about oh i'm gonna shave my head if she wins this <laughs> court case bring out the scissors no just wait i just bring out the clippers bring exactly out the clippers all I got to say about Tory Lanez is, bye, bitch. <laughs> what'd, you make of, Canada. what'd you make of his dad and the antics of his family after it was announced? It was giving guilty. It, it was giving, I see where he gets his behavior from. <laughs> I, if I was Jay-Z, I would have been like, what I got to do with this? What do I have to do with this? Grasping for straws. Grasping for straws. Like it just, it was embarrassing and unnecessary. I'm never happy or excited to see people suffering in this way to be, you know, losing a family member and all this and that. But it was definitely just wild, wild to hear the audio from that. Um, I enjoyed higher learnings discussion about this with Megan, the reporter, as they call her, who <laughs> really gave, who was in the court throughout, who gave a really good um, analysis of kind of what went down, what her thoughts were about the verdict, some of the truths of the actual perception in the courtroom versus public perception. And I think she made a good point about hoping to hear from some of the jurors. Cause I also hope that some of the jurors will actually talk about what went on behind the scenes and what their thought process was. Cause maybe that will still help some of the people who to this day in comments, I still see don't want to believe he, that man shot that woman. Like, these are the same people who don't believe R. Kelly did what he, what he did for decades. So I I don't have time for them. It makes me sad that this Poor became so souls. <laughs> <laughs> this became so divisive amongst men and women. Like I'm not I don't I hope that people don't take this and run with this as a oh, women beat men or men ain't shit to women, all of that. Let this just be this incident. Let them let, let this just be this one scenario between these people and let's move on. Because that, that made me frustrated and sad as well. Like, it seems like everybody just wanted to make this men versus women. It's not. Tory Lanez shot Meg the Stallion. That's what happened. That's what happened. And can we talk about the recording that was released the day after the verdict yeah which again people want to say oh but he never said what he was apologizing for okay all right sure whatever whatever you need to go to sleep at night i'm gonna have to put y'all in the trump supporters camp of just like you can't <laughs> be turned no matter what is said no matter especially what is now revealed. especially now if he's still your horse <laughs> If that is the After, heel you want to die on. We just gonna have to let y'all go. Taxes in years, but okay. We just got have it. to let y'all go. 
all right, we'll we'll see what happens when he is actually sentenced. Um, I don't have any thoughts or predictions. I don't want to predict how many years he's going to get any of that, but um, we'll see what happens. So oh, let's. I'm sorry. One last thing. Mm-hmm. I do appreciate Adele shouting out Meg. I appreciate everyone who offered Meg support because she, it was feeling rough out here in terms of Team Meg, who was the one who actually got shot. When she, when the information came out about her testimony of talking about her mental health, I struggled with that because again, everybody wanted to make this into such a circus and you forget she's a human being. These are human beings. These are people, these are still people's lives. And she was shot and then eviscerated publicly for having the audacity to name that man as her shooter. So wild but hopefully we're putting that in our rear view and she's able to move on with her life in a fresh new year. So let's move on to our two hot topics for today. The first one, rest in peace to the legend Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters passed away last Friday at the age of 93 and immediately tribute started pouring in from, you know, everybody. I saw as soon as I got home that day, you know, breaking news coverage of her interviews over the years of folks talking about the impact she had on not only women in journalism, but journalism as a whole and the pioneering work that she did. Um, Bob Iger, Disney CEO, said Barbara was a true legend, a pioneer, not just for women in journalism, but journalism itself. Oprah Winfrey said, without Barbara Walters, there wouldn't have been me, nor any other woman you see on evening, morning, and daily news. She was indeed a trailblazer. I did my first television audition with her in mind the whole time. I mean, Barbara Walters is your favorite's favorite, right? She paved the way for women in journalism to be able to break barriers, make more money, lead television shows, get the interviews, do all the things. And she will be missed for sure. But her legacy is vast. Delora, what were your thoughts when the news broke of her passing? I was saddened to hear the news of her passing, but I was immediately grateful for her life and her legacy It is fascinating to really, like, we are on this podcast because we love to talk about TV and movie. We are inspired by The View, her baby, and its hot topics, and literally even feeling empowered to have and speak our opinions at our age and ethnicity and gender. She plays a role in that. And to think that TV is still relatively a young medium, right? To the point where some of the first, her fingerprints are still very much prominent in in this sector. So I appreciate the work that she has done through the years. I have always been into news, even as a young kid. I grew up getting ready for school, watching the Today Show with Brian Gumbel and Katie Couric with Matt Lauer being the supporting cast and Ann Curry. Watching a Barbara Walters interview was an event. You sat down, you you had your drinks ready, you had your snacks ready, and you watched that entire interview, whether it was with the president of the United States or the freaking Kardashians. This quote will go into infamy for me. You don't really act. You don't sing. You don't dance. You don't really have any talent. (laughs) She was savage. She was so savage. She said that to their faces. I'm referring to the Kardashians. Like she asked Governor Chris Christie, why are you overweight? Like who, who could do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm over here. I'm trying not to laugh. (laughs) I want to let you get out your thought, but I mean, she, she's in a category of her all her own right to your point about the impact she had she was the first female co-host of the today show the first evening news anchor woman and obvi our fave co-creator 
and co-host of The View. My memories most vividly of Barbara Walters are from 2020 when I was a kid because we watched every Friday with her yes. and Hugh Downs. Yes. And I've been seeing, because I watched The View's tribute, that clip of when she was retiring and Oprah brought out all the women in journalism that Barbara had impacted I get emotional, every, like literally tear up every single time I see that clip because yes, as somebody who got a degree in journalism and spent the majority of my career in newsrooms and in that area, there's still so much fight and struggle in representation and in, mm. uh, you know, the ability to do what we need to do to be able to not only be represented on screen, but to also be fair and represent the communities that we serve, if that makes sense. And so when I think of people like Barbara Walters and Oprah Winfrey and all these people who have paved the way for journalists of today in ways that they'll never understand, I'm just grateful because I think it helps the world in general when news in particular Yes. Is representative of the communities because then you don't have these major skewings of police shootings and police brutality and yeah. negativity towards certain communities and all of that. And those discussions are real and they are had. So I'm grateful for her impact on women, but also, again, the broader impact on journalism yes. as a whole and on the folks who are able to do the jobs that they do because of those folks who are pioneers, it's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. And the fact that she is of the generation of my grandmother, the one that recently passed away, born in the same year, 1929. And I'm thinking like, wow, she did a lot. She did a lot from, if you think about what women were able to do in her lifetime, that's badass. And oh, yeah. she, if you look at some of her interviews, especially the ones leading up to her retirement, she's like, I didn't have any mentors, but what they always say about her, she was always prepared. She was over focused, yeah. over prepared, and she didn't go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, she got me there because I I know. Pee. I'm like, I, I have to pee. <laughs> but it's that determination and that grit, right? That has made her a household name and she will not be forgotten. Yeah. I hope that work ethic is still there for for folks today. I hope it's still there because it's important to do your job and do it well. That's all I got. Rest but in we peace. live in the era of the shade room, Ashley. Yeah, but you know, I feel like all of that has its place. It's not to invalidate um, the That's shade fair. room or any blogs or anything like that. But I feel like it all has its place. I think it the onus is more on individuals to understand and realize that they need to check their sources, right? That they need to, <laughs> that there are still places to go for folks who do this professionally and that the the ones who have the integrity behind and the codes of ethics behind the stories that they put out. That's That onus is on us as individuals as well, not just on the blogs. If you choose to believe everything you read on Facebook, that's, your prerogative but you know don't say anything when you're citing information that just makes no sense you know what I mean very true very so true. I feel like it all has its place but people like Barbara Walters and you know god forbid someday when we have to say goodbye to Oprah and some of those folks I'm not going to be ready so like that challenge that they were doing where they were prematurely announcing people's deaths y'all need to stop I don't play with death. That'll be a theme that we'll be talking about later. But yeah, no, we don't do that. Rest in peace to a legend, man. Rest in peace. All right, Delora, let's move on to our final hot topic of the day. This Rolling Stone greatest singers list, 200 
greatest singers. Now, if y'all been listening to this podcast for a little while, y'all know I love me some singing. Me and Delora talk about music a lot. We sing a lot, whether y'all like it or not. Apologies if you don't. But this is, you know, music is 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 deep. It's deep. It's so when Rolling, when Rolling Stone released this this list of 200 greatest singers, I wanted to give it a chance. Despite some of the backlash I'd already seen, <laughs> the snubs lots and lots, the of snubs backlash. of folks such as Celine motherfucking Dion. Not my unproblematic French Canadian princess. Like, I cannot believe she's not on this list. Jennifer Hudson. Egot. Jennifer Hudson. John Egot. Legend. John Legend. Exactly. Let me read y'all the disclaimer that Rolling Stone listed for this list. They thought they were list. cute with this, by the way. Yeah, they did. They say, and I quote, before you start scrolling and commenting, keep in mind that this is the greatest singers list, not the greatest voices list. Talent is impressive. Genius is transcendent. Sure, many of the people here were born with massive pipes, perfect pitch, and boundless range. Others have rougher, stranger, or more delicate instruments. As our write-up for the man who ended up at number 112 notes, Ozzy Osbourne doesn't have what most people will call a good voice but boy does he have a great one that could apply to more than a few people here let me stop y'all right there rolling stone let me stop y'all right the fuck there how could you have the audacity to have ozzy osborne to have courtney love to have fucking taylor swift on a list of greatest singers and exclude people who can fucking sing kelly clarkson is at 194 brandy brandy is at 193 who is referred to as a vocal bible, bible. <laughs> let me tell y'all something rolling stone because y'all play too much with this i don't know if y'all are trying to upset people with this oh list oh my I don't know if y'all were trying to upset people with this list. I saw that so apparently Alicia this list Keys has been around. Brandy. I know I, that. <laughs> I know that. I went through the whole list. And as I was looking, I said, you got to be fucking. I said, you got to be fucking kidding me probably more times than I can count. Let me tell y'all something really. So I didn't know y'all had been putting out this list apparently since 2008. I thought it was only 100 in 2008. I it, didn't know was. it was. Okay. Okay. I didn't even know this list existed. But let me tell y'all something. When y'all try to say that this is the greatest singers list, not the greatest voices list, I feel like what y'all are trying to say is greatest entertainers versus greatest voices. That's not accurate for me. I don't know if it's entertainers because, okay, so SZA at 180, right? Above Brandy, above Jasmine Sullivan, above freaking Kelly Clarkson, and apparently above Celine Dion. I appreciate SZA for what she brings. She brings a uniqueness, right? to her music like i understand in theory what rolling stone is trying to do but this task is simply impossible because i don't think anybody's gonna be happy about it <laughs> i don't think anybody's gonna be happy but there's a level of respect and what i was trying Correct. to say what Correct. i was trying to allude to with entertainment is like they're trying to say that there's more to these artists than just simply the ability to blow that's what i mean and yes okay yes. I, I got you. I get you. I get you. But it, some of this is just fucking disrespectful, right? It's just disrespectful to say that people who I cannot even imagine listening to or wanting to listen to an album of belong above people who, when they sing, gives you chills, gives you goosebumps. Their voices are of another caliber of talent. There are people who are great, can put on a show, you feel something, but then there are also the greatest singers, right? That's that's, that's different. That's different, Rolling Stone. It's different. This this list was disrespectful. But let's talk about the top 10 real quick. Well, I, I was going to say the list 
is disrespectful. Like, why is Rihanna higher than Amy Winehouse? I will never understand. <laughs> and I'm I love Riri. Don't get me wrong. We all but, love Riri. But I, I mean Rihanna above Jason Sullivan. Okay, okay. Anyway, but top ten, I'm not even mad at it. I'm not even mad at it. Ashley, top ten is all black folks. Did you notice that? That's why I wanted to talk about the top ten because. I feel like y'all are trying to upset me. Y'all really trying to upset me. And then I looked at the top 10 and I said, okay. Right. This this is fair. Now, in my heart, Aretha Franklin is number one because she came before Whitney Houston. Had it been the reverse, Whitney Houston is my number one. But Aretha is the blueprint. So I yes. will give y'all, I will give y'all that. But the top 10, I'm gonna let y'all have. I'm gonna let y'all have it. I'm gonna let y'all have it. I'm not because gonna argue Stevie with y'all. Stevie Wonder? I'm Lord. not gonna argue with y'all. But, Lord. but the I 200 say, list I'm as surprised. a whole, disrespectful. Now, are you surprised? Because I am I am newly fanning the F out over Ella Fitzgerald. Like I always knew of her, but I got a chance to really get into her Christmas music and obviously that's expand to other things and her voice is just otherworldly like the clarity the agility is just insane so like when I came to this list I was like they better have Billie Holiday they better have Ella they better have Patty which they do Mm -hmm. but are you surprised that Billie Holiday is higher than like an Ella Fitzgerald I'm I guess I'm not surprised just because I feel like there's a such a cultural relevance also to Billie Holiday. There was such a mm-hmm. magnitude to her in especially that particular era and Strange Fruit and just a lot mm-hmm. that also went into her, I guess, artistry is the best way to put it. But vocally, vocally, I probably still have to agree with you. But I think that, again, there's... There's a there's a, a give and take a little bit with this list to me in terms of who I could see vocally being above certain people, but I'm still not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue with the top ten. I'm gonna let y'all have. No. It. I'm gonna let y'all oh, have God. that top ten. Sam Cook, I still get freaking goosebumps hearing a change is gonna come. Like that man and- recorded this decades before I was born, and I still get goosebumps like, and i need a sam insane. cook biopic i need a sam cook biopic yes. especially the mystery surrounding his death i can't insane. let it go i can't let it insane. go insane yeah so i'm not gonna argue with y'all do i think that y'all play too much i do i do <laughs> yes I yes do. I'll, like anything <laughs> 10 below y'all playing yay <laughs> y'all play too much if y'all do this again next year, <laughs> consult some other people. Who's on y'all staff? Consult some other people because this is this is disrespectful. So, Delora, anything else for this greatest singers list? Any funny comments or things you've seen out on these internets? That's a great question. You know, like I said, I kind of highlighted the ones that I was like, really? Really, huh? We're gonna we're going to put Taylor Swift above. <laughs> I can't even pick anybody she's above and just be like, <laughs> why is she on this list? Why is she on this list? They even put it in the write up saying, like, oh, at one point this would have been controversial. At one point. Oh, especially if her live performances. Oh my God. <laughs> I have said this so many times. I adore Taylor Swift. She seems lovely. Ew, I appreciate her as a singer songwriter. I appreciate her means- as a songwriter. Well, well, I'm just saying that category <laughs> of, you know, she sings what she writes and I appreciate it. But I don't be looking for her for vocals. No, no. But I, okay. So I also appreciate new additions like Burner Boy, because, you know, I'm obsessed with him. He's at 197. And then Rosalia, I really appreciate her too. Um, so I appreciate the effort. They really try to like integrate, you know, other cultures. They try to have young and, you know, the old school. And yeah, 
it's just I understood Ariana Grande in terms of the 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 younger folks. I understood that. Yes, one. that yes. one made sense to me. Honestly, I I get Billie Eilish. I do why she's on there. I love Billie Eilish. I think she's one of the top two hundred singers of all time. Eh. No, I love Billie Eilish though. I do. I do love her. Oh, her ain't on there. Exactly. If you can have Billy, you can have her. Exactly. Exactly. I'm such an R and B head, though. It's so many of the misses for me were the fact that a lot of this leaned in directions music wise that I just don't prefer to go. I I would have even given a couple country artists more uh, yeah. play in this. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you say that because I was happy to see Chris uh, Stapleton. I was happy to see the great Dolly Parton because her voice is very unique in its own way and but she's actually talented singer songwriter <laughs> but and see, I don't love Dolly's voice but the, the the stamp that she has on country music yes I understand but yeah it's it's controversial it's going to be controversial for me a lot of a lot of it because again vocalists are vocalists y'all play too much with this list for me but we'll see what happens <laughs> with the next incarnation of this appreciate usher appreciate some of the folks that lauren hill lauren hill made me happy made me smile when i saw it and then others i was just like y'all are, y'all are fucking around okay celine dion know that you're great i know you're dealing with some health issues i know just know you're on every sane person's top 200 greatest singers of all time list okay Her voice that's her voice the disrespect her and jennifer hudson flat out the disrespect unpopular opinion i understand why jay hood's not on there i don't jay hood can sing but it's giving one note for me if you're going to put ozzy osbourne i'm gonna keep going back to some of these (laughs) rockers who don't sing they shout what are her songs how many albums has she put out like we know she can sing but she doesn't have the catalog i feel like so again then that's going more down to influence which again if that's the case then we're not definitely has yes we're not just talking about because in my opinion jennifer hudson vocally can out sing the majority of this list so if you're talking about greatest singers strictly a singer she should definitely be on this list like flat out i can't i can't say it any differently if someone can win an academy award an oscar a grammy and an emmy and be an amazing vocalist and not make this list i don't know what the fuck we're doing well to be fair she didn't get them off from singing but okay delora you know the talent (laughs) is is what i'm referencing i understand (laughs) the talent is what i'm referencing but again we'll see what the next incarnation of this list looks like y'all failed me with this one besides y'all top 10 so do better that's all i got delora what are we recapping for our first 2023 content film or movie review ashley we are recapping the number one movie on Netflix for the past, I believe, four weeks. The Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Dun, dun, dun! Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. Ryan Johnson's second project. It is star-studded. It's a comedy, thriller, mystery. It's a lot of fun. All right, guys. We will see you next week. Be blessed. See you there. Oh. Bye.